30 seconds. It says it's going live. All right. Hello. I am live in theory. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, today for Pix Carts, I want to finish up this um, circuit track. Uh, fortunately for this one, uh, all the assets are. Wait, hold on. My microphone's peaking. Can I? It's on low. Bruh. I'm just going to move it further away. <laughs> but um, fortunately, all of the uh, assets. Um, are stuff that I pretty much already have. I think pretty much the only new thing I'm going to be doing for this track is the road texture. Uh, but other than that, I'm not gonna have to like pull out uh, Magic of Voxel and model more stuff. Um, oh, I'm just remembering that this is a duck. <laughs> I was just staring at this for the past like 10 minutes while I was trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to um, do art-wise for some stuff. Um, and I completely forgot that I turned the whole track into a duck. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're going to be using the same, like, tree, a lot of the same stuff as Moo Moo, um, the same grass texture probably, and then, uh, yeah, just doing the road texture. But the road texture is going to come first, so that's what I'll do first. I'm um, thinking this might take me, like, an hour or two to texture the whole thing and then test it, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. I'm theoretically live? Yeah, I guess. Um, oh, uh, next week I might do some... Is my... My webcam's, like, at an angle. So it's, like, not being accurate. That's funny. Alright, um... But, uh, next week I might mix in some stuff with Shobnet, because I just... Pretty much finished the core stuff for it. It hasn't really been tested, but uh, I have something I'm messing around with. Um, and you might see some of that next week. And I might, what I might do is flip the live streams back and forth between those two projects. Uh, well, PixCarts and the other project. So that will be a, a possibly upcoming two multiplayer projects I'll be working on at once. Uh, <laughs> on top of Yanok, which is the. I guess the one I'm not streaming. Uh, I might mix in some Yannock streams at some point. We'll see. Especially as they get closer to release and um, uh, things are more complete, I guess. And I'm more, I guess, singularly focused on it. Because right now, I um, Yannock's release is far enough out that I'm just kind of doing a little bit of everything, which is nice because I can wake up and be like, hey, I want to work on this project today. <laughs> uh, yeah. How many lines of code is in this project in total? Um, I think it's only a few thousand. It's not that many, actually. Because the, the code's not that complicated. It's a racing game. Uh... I don't you I have no interest in putting Pi game games on web browsers, so I'm not gonna make a, a Pike bag tutorial. Anyways. So do we have no okay. I'm gonna duplicate this one and then I'm gonna call this um what is this one? Is it the train? It's that's floor is the correct name for it. So this will be floor. Uh, and the way this works is I can grab, like, where's my magic thingy? My magic wand. That is W. I can, like, grab the floor and then put, or I guess the duck body, and <laughs> uh, just texture it automatically. So all I have to do is create the tile for that. Um, and I do actually have some references I can use. Hang on. Uh, so if I go over to stuff, pix cards, data, images, maps, do I have, I guess I can pull it off. I can pull it off a of frosty iceberg or, yeah, so here's the floor on frosty iceberg, but that's a little bit rocky. I don't want it to be that rocky because, um, this is supposed to be asphalt. 
Let's load up the palette first and then I'll start playing around with stuff. This is gonna be the trickiest part to get right. Everything else is gonna be easy. Um, so I got a couple dark colors to work with. I'm gonna mostly work around this one and then I'm gonna, I guess, do the rest off of that. Um, I can choose any size I want for this, really. Uh, so I'm just gonna go up here and put this in. What do we want? Uh, is it? So that's 10 by 10. I think 20 by, actually this one can be 16 by 16, I think, because the um, asphalt is gonna be more grainy, I guess, and less, you can, discrete rocks. Which means, um, actually, do I just use a spray brush for this? I don't ever use a spray brush, but I think I might actually use it. Wait, just blur, jumble. Where's the, aha, spray tool. Oh, yikes. Spray. So I, I can do like that, kind of. Um, but then the way I'm gonna do this is make it so that, where's, is it B? What, what is the spray, shift B? But the way I'm gonna do it, that looks all right. And I can just switch back and clean this up. But yeah, the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna layer different colors so that um, it's not, that looks kind of like this doesn't look very thematically consistent with the rest of the game. Um, the, the road colors are normally flatter and um, they don't pop out as much. They're not supposed to. Uh, so the solution to that is you take this, you, where's the capacity? Oh uh, yeah. I'm gonna turn this to like 100. Why did it do that? Huh? Oh. One hundred. There we go. And then now I can turn up my brush size. And then we just do this stuff. And then you turn it down a little bit and you do that. And then um, I think let's go to this darker color. Okay, now this is gonna have to, to have a much lower opacity. Let's do 80. And there we go. That will be the road, I guess. Uh, how does this tile? As long as it's not too jarring, we're good. That looks all right. All right some Minecraft beta gravel looking tile. <laughs> All right, so here's where the magic comes in. Is, is it control, is it shift B? Shift B. Nope. I forgot the stamp key. It's control B. All right. Uh, so I can do that. And then we just do our W and then paint bucket it and boom we've got a road interesting behold the road that was easy now uh the next thing is that there needs to be like the the road stripe thingies i'm debating whether or not to do this by hand this could go very poorly or not um It's like, uh, where is, I guess I can take like the color from here. Is it this one? Nope, there it is. I can take like one of these and then go over here and be like, we can run those stripes down. Although, hmm.
This is, would be very tricky to get like down the middle correctly. And the other thing, uh, I guess I can do it by hand like this. It's just gonna become inconsistent at some point. What's my size, seven? How many pixels is in here? It's three, six, nine, 12, 14 between. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a better way to go about this that, hmm. I mean, I guess technically these types of roads don't, like if it's a circuit, you don't have the stripes in the middle, although you normally have them on the edge instead, which I can do. You know, I'm gonna do that instead. I'm gonna put the stripes on the edge. So for that, let's do some other stuff. Let's, uh, I'm gonna need to take out the floor, grab the terrain, go up to floor. Actually, no, we need a new layer on top of this. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. No, the trick would be to invert it and do an outline, I think. Uh, we'll just put a new layer right here. So we invert this. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, it, no, it's control I. No, how do I invert? Select control shift I. I thought I hit that. Hello. Oh, it's just hard to tell. Which way is it going? I don't even know. Okay, so there we go. So that's going to be the outside. Uh, now I take the paint bucket and we just fill that. And then you select all and you do a, where's my color that I want? You just here, right? So now I can select all on this layer, do sh not, not control shift O, shift O. What is that as an O? Um, and what I'll do is I'll put actually some opacity on this so that you can see a little bit of the road, I'll do 180. And then we'll put it to What should this be? So we'll do it like three, and then we'll go up to four, grab a darker one, and then we go back to five and shift O again. I'll need the alpha down. 180, shift O, okay. There we go. Um, and that gives us the edge of the track. I'm thinking about stylizing it a little bit. So here, let's do something funny. So if I turn this down to one, <laughs> I can shift O again, but you're not gonna be able to see it. But then I can go back to 180, shift O, and it gives me another stripe basically, which looks cool, I think. All right, uh, and then what is this layer exactly? What is four? All right, so let's go ahead and put four, or well, five over four. I think that's correct. Is it? You know what? I'm gonna go with no, actually. It should probably be on the floor. Um, and then now, let's just go paintbrush thingy. Actually, you know what? I can, uh, there's a different way to do this. Do that. Oh, I forgot. We forgot the little islands. 
You know what? Those could be just normal dirt, though. Um, that would be an interesting thing to mix in there. So I'm going to grab the normal dirt, and then we'll make that the track for those parts. So turn that into a brush. And then we'll go over to floor here and we'll just go, boop, there's that. You just run through all these and that's those. Uh, now, if I grab this, I can just, um, I'll show you, wait. No, I, I'll do it like that. Huh? Where did, where's that even pasted onto? Hello? It's on five. Wait, why is it on five? That's funny. All right, just delete that. And next up is, I'm gonna have to pull this from Moo Moo. We'll have to go over to maps, Moo Moo floor. So over here, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to pull this from the A sprite from Moo Moo. Do I even have that? Oh, yep, I do. So up here, I believe, where's my, my stamps this is what I need. Grab those, we go up here on the floor and we just drop them right in the corner. So when it gets out here, they'll be able to see it on the texture. Um, so I believe I just take this one and it's like, what was I? So the way this works is there's a thing I put on top. Wait, what? Which, what's going on top here? Oh, wait, is that's going to be... I probably can't. Yeah, there's a reason that was on its own layer. Um, because I'm pretty sure, yep, there it is. It's a little bit hidden, can't really see it. If I turn off the, if I turn off both the floors, you can see that there is that last stamp I need. So I need the, these two bottom left ones to stamp everything. Uh, let me grab this real quick. Do, do, do. We'll make a brush out of it, and then we'll do one to destination and turn on our floors again. And we'll put this on to floor. Actually, wait, we will need another layer because this needs to go on top of um... Oh, wasn't that going to turn this into a dock or something? Ah, it's a bit late for that. I could maybe, eh, I believe it. So then the grass would just come to here. Um, how do I do this? So that one we don't stamp on at all. This one we, we, we go over this one. So make a new layer, and then this will be the one we put our stamps on. We just run along the edge. Uh, one interesting thing. Hmm. I'm thinking that the stripes on the edge here are not sticking out enough. You're not going to be able to notice that they're there. The solution is to make them bigger. Yes. No, there's a better. Wait. Um, I did a line to source, didn't I? Which means I can fix the tile in here. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of magic to correct this. Uh, I'm gonna have to add in more road next to the road. It's gonna be tricky. Um, hmm. 
Not sure if I know entire, exactly the algorithm they're using for the outline, but I might be able to get it so that just on the grass we expand the road. There'll be a little bit of tricky mask and stuff, but we'll see. Uh, reading chat real quick. What if you put a stripe in the middle of your other file that you copied from and then paint bucket it in? Um, I can, but that doesn't help. The, the issue with the stripe was that getting it consistent and not making it look like squiggly lines would be the tricky part. Um, yeah, there's not really a good way to do that, especially because the road is not technically even in a lot of spots. It's a little bit rugged on the edges. But uh, although, like normally these types of roads don't, like the, the ones you race on, I don't think have the stripe down the middle. So technically we're fine without it. But they do have one on the edge. Where is the avatar? That is a good question. Where did it go? There it is. Did I not have it up this whole time? Oops. That's a thing. What game engine am I using? I'm not using any. I'm just using Pygame. Um, all right. Let's grab. Uh, well, yeah, so what I'm going to do is. It's going to be tricky. So I have the f this floor. The trick is to grab the road. So we go over to layer two and we grab the road. And then we go over to the floor. Wait, no, we need a new layer. New layer. And then we will just dump into this, that color. And then we go back over to that. We select the grass. Now go back to layer seven, that's this thing. And then we grab whatever color, this one doesn't matter, let's just do the blue. Uh, Shift O, I don't know if this is gonna work the way I'm hoping it will. Oh, it looks like it does, that's great. All right, so doing this, I can add way more width to the road where we need it. Um, so that will give us one more width to work with. Um, now that I have that stripe where I want more road to be, I can do select that, just grab the stripes. And, oh, that's a mistake. So I have to do this one now. Wait, floor. Nope, layer two. Hello. Layer two. There we go. I, I messed up my grass selection. I forgot there's multiple areas. Um, so I gotta go back to seven. Grab that, and we're gonna do the shift O thing however many times. Three, four, five, six, I think it's seven. Or is it eight? I think it's eight. That was kind of like eight. All right. Now, now we go over and grab the purple. Oh, no, no, no that's not purple. Uh, the blue and then we can uh oh i've got to stamp this first oops um hang on where's my stamp so wait, wait later to put my stamp it's five Wait, no, it is floor, right? Floor has that, yeah. 
This is what I need. I need this thing. I need to make a brush out of it. Align to source. And then I gotta go back to seven. And then we start selecting all these things. This is such a pain. And then uh, now B, G, there we go. Finally. That is the road extension. Now we just gotta get rid of this thing and the road is wider. Ta-da. All right. Um, the finish line needs to be fixed. So that will be uh, four, four, yes. All right, so we can just grab this, I guess. Uh, I need it from here. No. I need it from here. And then we can put that over there, cut this part off. And then on this side, we need this. And then we cut it off. There we go. Behold the fixed road. Now I can finally get to stamping the grass on. I do find like this, well wait. Where's seven? So seven can just be merged down into the floor. But I do find this type of um, problem solving can be interesting, just dealing with masks and stuff and these types of applications. Uh, and you do have, you essentially end up doing these types of problems when you're making games anyways. So it's a decent exercise. All right. So five, yeah. So we can make our brush and we do back to line to destination so that we can stamp it everywhere. Um, and then which layer do we say we're gonna put this on? It's like empty, the six, yeah. So the way this is gonna work is this is gonna go up to here, kind of. I'm gonna have to be more careful with this track than most of them, I think, on how I line these up. Oh, wait, I did like every other one first, and then you come back so that it ends up being like that. Um, so you go like every other, go all the way through. Yeah, actually I can zoom out a fair bit while I'm doing this. But if you've seen these streams before, you know that I'll be doing this stamping for a bit, but this is where the track starts to come together and look cohesive. This is really what makes the game actually look decent, I think, is just doing these edges. So you just place every other one first, you come back and you do the second layer of the tops, and then afterwards you um, put in the third layer, which is to start blending it in with the rest of the map. Do that. So then this part needs it as well. And then um, let, let's just go along one side. I already know that I'm not too worried about this not looking good because we use it on Moomoo. So the technique should be fine. Uh, normally I would do like one area to make sure it looks good, but uh, yeah, we should be fine. So you'll just have to wait and see it come together. It's interesting just how three layers of stamps can make it like Moo Moo look the way it does. Um, 
and it's not so obvious that the stamps are what's happening. But yeah, this is the annoying thing I was talking about, I think, last stream, where the river is just going to be something I have to like stamp the whole way along because that's how the rivers work. Um, I had to do this on the ice map, too. All right. So I'm going to follow this around. Well, do I want to do the inside? Yeah, well, let's just go back this way, I guess. We more stamping. Like I said, three layers of this that I have to go throughout the whole track with. That's where most of the stuff for this comes from. There's probably a way to computationally do this that I probably should have tried to do automatically. Because I do have like the boundaries for the track and everything. That's how I was doing the, the outlines. Um, Not so far. What do I use to draw the circuit? Well, I'm using a spray right now. Uh, I should add tire barriers for the circuit theme. I could. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Um, what is that? It's just like stacks of tires, right? Well, the weird thing is, is that there's cars already on the track and the cars are going to be so small where the tires are technically like four pixels. So putting tires on the track <laughs> makes the scale a bit weird. But I already have like trees and chickens and stuff that are giant. So maybe they're just small cars. Um, but yeah, I could put some tires, I guess. We'll see. I don't like that. Oh, this is a weird spot. I wanna just, this is gonna annoy me if I don't do this right now. <laughs> all right, we go all the way around. What happened here? What, what? How did that pixel? Hang on. You see these like four pixels sticking up here? I'm not even sure how those got there. It's not on my stamp, you can see. It is not on my stamp. But you can see when I placed the stamp, it appeared. That's so weird. Is that an A spray bug? But, I mean, it's going to get stamped over later anyway, so it's not an issue for me, but that's such a weird thing to happen. All right. I have to be very careful with how I do these edges. That's awkward. <laughs> So we can go all the way up. I get faster the longer I'm doing this. Oh, there it is again. Oh, is it? Oh, it's because it's of the pattern alignment. If I drag it, it'll start drawing another one. It's interesting. Is it? Well, there's paintbrush too. That's the one that's gonna have less issues. But if I drag it, it'll, it'll look funny. All right. Here we go. That's um, part of it. I half. Oh, I didn't go this way. I gotta do this part of the river now. 
Uh, as I get further away, since no one's actually gonna be going over here, I actually um, don't have to be too picky about how this looks. So I can just throw them down. All right, so the next part, um, I guess I start over here next and then I go this way and that'll come down, I'll go this way and all the way down here and over to here and that will get the rest But I've already done the rivers, so or the the long parts of the rivers. So there's not. This is qu quicker than the other half, I think, because this ends up being the inside of the duck once it gets around this curve here. but I'm gonna have to go, go clean that up. Yeah, this part right here has gotta be done. So over here too. Gotta do the like on the left. That's a bit awkward. All right, yeah, this one needs to be done too. And then um, I can go down here. Down to yet another body of water. There we go. Actually, this should be like that more so. Now the question is, how do I want to follow this river? I think I'll just go across this way first and then come down here. <clears throat> What's going on? I'm doing the artwork for a track. This is what game development looks like. Most of the time you're working on art, not code. <laughs> All right, let's go around this loop too. Oh, no. Nope. And gotta go around all these patches of land. There we go. Listen. That's that, and then we can go up this way. And we'll get, we'll finish this part in a moment. And it'll just be the duck's like foot area for the first layer of stamps. The good news is, like I said at the beginning of the stream, uh, we, or I don't, I don't have to do very much in the ways of uh, creating new assets. So the biggest part really is just the stamping. So once the stamping is done, the tracks is going to be almost ready because I can throw in the, uh, the tiles very quickly. Uh, why is it that people don't recognize a sprite? 
I feel like most people would know what a sprite is at this point. When I use MS Paint, everyone knows what it is. Actually, no, I think I've seen some people ask what I'm using when I'm using MS Paint. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to do this river and go down to the feet and then we do our second layer. This is the foot of the duck. done with our first layer finally there we go I think that's everything for the first layer so it looks funky right now but once I do the second layer it'll still look funky until I get um, uh, the, the second actual stamp in uh, but yeah for now um, it looks like the this spot right here is the best spot to start. So we'll go over here. Let's just clean this up. That's what that's going to look like. These little bushes. Um, and then we'll do this lake too. Actually, no, I think I'm faster doing the second layer. I was thinking it was going to be slower because you have to be more precise. But the fact that it's very obvious where the stamp is supposed to go and the spacings, I guess, clear. Um, I think it makes it go faster. Because I can, I have a decent precision, but it takes a moment to figure out how much spacing I want with the other ones. Anyways, um, but yeah, I, I, like I said, I wanted to do the inside first, so I'm going to go over here. I need to be that there. All right. So we just go follow the spacing here, and we go all the way around. Looks like a bush for now until I get that third layer in. All right, so I can go down here. Yeah, it's going a lot faster. I can zoom out all the way on here. I don't think I've ever zoomed out this far while doing this part, but it's fine. At the end of the stream, you will get to see me racing on the track, probably. The new, newly completed one. And then we'll have seven out of probably eight tracks for the next play test. The, next, the um, next track's probably going to be even easier to do because it's going to be like a void-themed track, maybe. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet. If it is a void-themed one, then there's not actually going to be very much necessary artwork. So it'll be done pretty fast. And then we'll have another playtest. Although I do have bugs to fix, and um, I have to fix the website, which is not <laughs> functioning quite right. I have to figure out what happened there, uh, and a few other things. But uh, we're getting, I guess we're probably, um, I should probably look at starting, you know, like scheduling another playtest soon, I guess, because um, we're getting there. Uh, and then I'll have to talk with the guy doing the music to see how many tracks we we're going to plan for in total um, for release because I'm thinking somewhere between 8 and 16. Uh, actually, I don't think I would do 8 because eight's probably too few, so I would probably at least add two more and put it to 10. But I'm not sure if I'll do like... Um, or like just anywhere in the range of 10 to 16. I'm not too sure. I also have to have the ideas for the tracks, which will take a minute. We don't like that. Spacing here is a bit weird, but oh well.
It looks so much more lush with the um, second batch here. Uh, I wish there's, oh, I kinda wanna zoom out to between those two levels, because right here is not great. I think I wanna zoom out more. The more I can zoom out, the less I have to click and drag, which saves me a little bit of time. All right, we gotta do this lake. Ooh. That's awkward. I have not done the other side of this. in a moment though so here we go all right um next up is the outside here that turns into the inside of the duck and that will be the second layer and then we do the third layer and it will be pretty much done Uh, you really want to thank me because I'm the one who got you into programming back in 2020. You really love my work. Keep it up. Thank you. Um, I mean, that's pretty much the reason I make uh, most of the stuff on my channel. That and, uh, well, I do get benefit out of it in the form of uh, ad money, which isn't a ton. I can make more doing other things. but um, And then also, if I want to get into game development, it's helpful. But... Uh, the original re reason, well, there's two, two, wait, one, two, yeah, just two, um, two reasons that I originally started my YouTube channel, which was, uh, one, j just to, um, like, help people like this and, um, like, with tutorials and stuff, because that's the original that I start way I got started on, at least in the form you see this channel now, um, but then the other reason... <laughs> which I've mentioned in one of the shorts is that I wanted people to play multiplayer games with if I made multiplayer games. Um, so it was not actually for money at first because I wasn't, I mean, even now, um, the, uh, I could be making more money doing other things with my time than YouTube, but I, I just like doing it. And I do appreciate what it does pay because um, the arrangement I have now is that I only work, uh, well, I don't work a full 40 hours a week because I actually supplement my income a bit with the stuff from YouTube, which is a pretty good deal. So believe it or not, the, um, I guess the more, like the more patrons I have, the more successful you, my YouTube and game development stuff is like it, in terms of uh, monetary stuff, the more time I can spend on these types of things. Although a fair bit of my time does go towards things that are not long term profitable. So, like Pix Cards, for example, I'm probably not going to make any money off of it ever, um, other than ad revenue. So, I'm probably making like, like a couple bucks an hour. And the ad revenue is from people watching YouTube videos about it, not me putting ads in the game. <laughs> so, um, yeah, doing pixel cards just because I want to make a game like this. And I mean, it's a good exercise as well. Gotta finish these feather details. The feathers will be a very different color than the rest of the duck. All right. Takes. I, I'm wondering, is the save progress bar broken? Because you look and it's just it's working and it says zero the whole time. 
So there's the progress bar, but it's not even being used. I would think that it's really just not tested that much because rarely do you have something in a sprite as large as this. <laughs> but yeah. All right, one more section. Then we gotta do the last layer of stamps and we start placing blocks and trees and plants and stuff like that. Uh, and then maybe if we have time, I'll do the tires. Cause that would be cool. Almost there. It's weird how this stuff just comes together when you start putting everything down. Like the the, I think the stripes are starting to look pretty good with the grass down. Um, all right. Let's grab this other stamp here. So it's, I think, five. Yep. It's in here somewhere. It's going to be, <laughs> got to find it. Yep. There it is. It's hard to see. All right. So go back up to six. This is where I did all my stamps. Just double check that they're all correct. Uh, and so next step here, we stamp over them um, so that you get, like, so that smoothly goes into the grass color. Uh, now you develop web servers with Golang. Interesting. I have not tried that. Or Golang. Um, I don't... It's. I've done... Like, I like to do a little bit of web development every now and then, but I would not like that to be my job. I don't think. Uh, I mean, well, there are other things that are worse. It depends. You use Godot sometimes it's a very cool engine. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I agree. For the engines out there, of the ones that I've tried, I, I, I like it the most, but um, I, I just use it for the 3D stuff. Uh, you might ask when Yannick comes out on stream because you saw the video of it. It looks very well made. Um, I was shooting for maybe sometime this summer or early fall. We'll see. Uh, so... Right now, I'm thinking maybe September, October. I've got a lot of stuff I want to do on it, um, so we'll have to see. I, I think the pr the mistake I made with Drawn Down Abyss was that I released it too early. The concept was cool, people liked it, but there just wasn't very much content to the game. It felt somewhat repetitive. I, th I feel like the cards went a long way to making it not feel too repetitive, but it just visually there wasn't a whole lot there. Um, so I would like to put, I guess, more into Yannock and not try to release it as soon as it's a game that plays like, I don't know, a game. <laughs> uh, yes, this is Python. But I think right now what I'm shooting for is maybe mid-September. Uh, that is a special date for me. If you look at Super Potato Bread's release date, that was also mid-September. Uh, I believe September 19th. So, yeah. Anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this stuff. So once I have stamped all of this, the road will be, or the floor texture will be pretty much complete, I think. I'll have to double check and make sure I didn't miss anything, but I think this should be everything. So I do like a, I zig, I do a zigzag pattern on this be, um, just because it makes it less obvious that there's this is done by stamps. Looks more 
hand drawn if I do a zigzag on it. So this is what it's gonna end up looking like, kind of like this. So this is a good sample area right here. Um, I can't do much about this section down here. That's gonna have to, um, I'll try and clean that up by hand later. Uh, these sections are a little bit tricky. Um, so I guess we are done this way now. Actually, it does not need to be that far out. So we can just do the edges back here. Just kind of place them somewhat randomly. No one's going over here in theory. So not too worried about this section. <laughs> if you go over here and see some weird looking grass, it's not my problem. I could actually have just cut off the grass earlier down the river because you technically shouldn't even be able to reach this area. Uh, but it will bother me if I don't, it's kind of like an OCD thing, except I don't have OCD, so I'm not, sh it's like if I did have OCD, that would be one of the things where you're like, oh, it's because I have OCD. <laughs> <laughs> but most things I'm not really like that, so I don't know. You can probably hear my mouth super well because it's right below my microphone. <laughs> uh, I wonder how many clicks it takes me to make one of these maps. It's probably like, is it like tens of thousands or is it thousands? That's the question. up a little bit. I think that the second stamp is the, the most enjoyable one to do, like the second layer. This one feels kind of tedious and it requires more clicking than the others because it's a smaller stamp and it, uh, and I'm zigzagging it to make it so that there's a lot of them. And you don't really see much visually as a result of the stamping. So it doesn't feel very rewarding to do. So I get pretty sloppy with it. But it is very important Without it, it would look like a line of bushes and not the grass going off into the road. But I have a lot of 
maps with grass like this now. So I think this might be the last one that I do this stamp on. The other ones might will hopefully be something else. Maybe someday I'll replace the road that goes into the lakes with a dock. That would be add some more visual variance to the level. But this is a circuit track, so it's not supposed to be too fancy. You know, I could just cra grab the dock texture from uh, what what you call it from Pirate Bay. Or maybe I could just make that a second stream and go and do the docks and the tires. That would be interesting. And I could maybe do add more decorations, maybe make a tree because I want to make a tree with no leaves on it for the ice map. So there's a, multiple things that kind of need polishing. So I could turn that into next stream or something like that. And then that would be actually more interesting probably because it's not just clicking for a bunch of stamps. But then again, people watch Osu. Literally just clicking circles. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. Almost there, so close. Just zigzag a little bit more. This is the spot I'll have to do by hand in a bit. Um, I don't like those stray pixels that end up popping up because of the, the pattern I'm doing. It's a little bit annoying. will connect. Wait, I skipped the feet, didn't I? So I still gotta do the feet. Wait, did it just go all the way around? I don't remember what parts I've even done. <laughs> it's a little bit mind numbing to go all the way around the duck with the flat green stamps. Where you just tram it, trimming off the edges. All right. Oh wait, yep, there's where I started. Came all the way around. All right, so that is the outside of the duck that you just did. But I did it all the way around the feet too. <clears throat> so that is most of the work. Um, I just gotta do the inside here, which should be pretty quick. It's like half the work or something. <laughs> uh, did I have a problem when I have a game in mind, but art is a problem and then I kill the project? Um, well, I do normally start with the art because I want to get that nailed down. So I guess in theory that can happen. Um, uh, although I mean, now I'm at the point where most things I can do. I guess to a degree, it's like there are projects that I intentionally won't work on. Just I won't even start on it because I, I know um, that it's not something I want to deal with art-wise. So things that have a lot of animation or um, I guess human characters and stuff like that are things that I avoid because um, I, for example small pixel art human characters are kind of a pain not very good at them 
uh, so I don't do that. Uh, there are other things I don't do. Also, like things with a lot of buildings and stuff, because I'm better at like grass tiles and trees and stuff like that. Uh, can I just click and drag? No. Here's what happens if I click and drag. You see, it, you can see the smooth edge from the green. Um, the whole point is that it's bumpy. So by here's where, like I'll do this on the road so you can see. I'm doing this. So the idea is to have those ridges so that it's less obvious that I'm just dragging, like erasing from the other stamp. It makes it look more natural. And it's like a huge difference because just like looking at this, it's like, whoa, it's very obvious what happened there. But looking over here, it looks like that might have been like almost hand done. I mean, it is hand done to some degree, but um, yeah, it's very important that I do it as stamps. Uh, yeah. All right. So it is time to do the second loop here. So we can start up, I guess, right here. Right about here. So we can start going down this way. At some point, we got to split because I don't want to be trying to stamp around the pond right now. All right. All right. And this is down to the river, so we're already going way faster than the other one. Just go straight down the middle there, and then I will have to come back and get those later. I'm just gonna go up right for now and go all the way around and then clean up the stuff I missed. Actually, I'm going like way too close to the edge here. Need to be out more. Need more grass detail. You know, I've broken, like, I, I keep buying the same Logitech mouse, and I've broken, like, three or four of them since I started getting them a while ago, uh, just from clicking too much, and then eventually that stops clicking properly. <laughs> Although that's mostly from League. So, like, oh, uh, can I? Yeah, here, I'll demonstrate. So you can probably hear, just, this is what I'm doing normally when I'm playing League. It's clicking, like, that fast for like, um, for decent portions of a game, which would be, uh, I don't know, probably for like 10 or 20 minutes of like, uh, uh, of a 30 minute game, I'll be doing that. Or maybe not. But I destroyed a fair amount of mice doing that. I don't have RSI though, which is nice. And also play Beat Saber, which also surprisingly has not given me RSI. I know some people that I got carpal tunnel and had to get surgery though. From playing too much Beat Saber. Um, so like I actually stopped playing competitively at a certain point because I didn't want to have to go get wrist surgery because I played too much Beat Saber. Like I know multiple people that like got the surgery and just had to stop playing the game at that point. Um, yeah, it's a dangerous game. I think that probably also happens to OSU players as well. I don't know if it's, it probably happens, I would assume so. 
because those people are cooking a lot. And also players get pretty addicted to that as well. So, um, all right, we got one section left, I think. Is that correct? Oh, and then the hand done stuff up here. Um, but then we start putting on the blocks and we've got ourselves a track. So we're getting very close here after like an hour of stamping. <laughs> But that's what goes into the track of this size when you want it to all be like pixel art and whatever. It's just like the, I, I'm actually very happy with the solution I came up with for stamping it because that like artwork wise, it works out really well. Like making a track in a day is feasible, which is considering that there's pixel art everywhere is pretty a pretty good deal and it doesn't look bad I would say because like just in general the um the style I've gone with for doing the edge of the track like this goes a really long way to or towards giving the game some style but while not being too much work it's not like very obvious like geometric shapes or anything either works out pretty well So like, I think in 3D things are a little bit easier, maybe. And I really should have, with the hindsight I'm, I'm thinking I should have just made a tool that can automatically stamp this for me with some randomness to it and then I could go like, clean it up later. Um, Cause in theory this could be automated, you could make a tool to do this. Um, be a bit tricky, but you can do it. All right, so we hit escape and we grab this color and we just go here and we increase our brush size and we just go wee and that will be, actually I think the way this is gonna have to work is like uh, something like that, I don't know. Add some ridges. This is the problem I was talking about earlier. You gotta make it look natural to some degree. All right, got the same problem over here. Just gonna draw down the middle and then I'll stamp in the circle. Yeah. This one's longer, much longer. All right, so we just stamp in our circle along here and hopefully because the way it mixes in you're not going to be able to notice that's what's happening all right <sighs> almost there we go behold we have a track wait Got this spot too. <laughs> there might be some other ones too that I gotta work at. We'll see. Here's that. That's fine. Is it done? It might be done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Time to export our floor tech. Oh wait, no, one more thing. I for almost forgot this. So we have this layer, we have this layer. So now, do I have the yellow on that one? Oh, this one needs the yellow. Wait, no, hang on, that's a... Okay, so the way this works is, uh, oof, wait. Hang on. One of these things is not like the others. This one, the finish line needs to be moved down a layer. So I have to grab that. I'm just gonna cut that and then we'll go down to five. No, five, yeah. Put that there, just right on top of it. 
Um, and then we'll go over to four and six. I'm going to merge four or well, six into four. And that gives us this layer. Um, this one I need to like clean some stuff up on. Just round these out just a tiny bit so that they're not blatantly rectangles. I think that's the only one on the track, isn't it? Yeah. Wait, let me just double check with the extras. Where is it? Yeah, it's the only one on the track. So, uh, next step, uh, the outline. I think I do, is it, I'm trying to remember the number I do here. I'm gonna do 110. <laughs> I don't think that's the correct number, but I don't remember what it is. Cause it's the opacity for the, uh, where's my 110? Did I not? Oh, I, I did that in the wrong spot. That goes over here, 110. And then we'll go, actually, you know what? It should be darker than the other tracks now that I think about it because of the, um, the road itself being dark. Anyways, the way this works is that I'll do like an, a shadow coming off of like everything that's, whoa, I forgot about that part. Uh, so the way this works is you first select, see this one, no, this one, this one. You do your W select right there. And then you go up to this layer and then you do your shift O. And you can see that the outlines are there. Um, and you just keep doing that. I think I do three normally. I think that's fine. And then we just hide the extras and behold, we've got the track with the shadows and everything's there. I'm really doing a lot. Um, I'm putting a lot of work on the outline tool here. <laughs> Anyways, so let's go ahead and, um, oh, that's not how you output a file or save a file. Um, we're gonna turn this into our floor. Export as, Oh, but yeah, floor. Yes, export. Yay. All right, that is the floor. So the next step is to go into the editor, which we already have on the correct map. And I believe it should immediately pull the correct thing. So if I just go down here, there's the track. Um, so the first thing is going to be the fences. Uh, which, ooh, the line up here is going to be tricky. Um, I guess I can do it like that. And we're just going to go around this way. This is the, I guess, more interesting part. I'll leave a little bit of a shortcut for those people that have like the speed boosts and whatever. Um, I'm trying to think if there's, yeah, there's no benefit for you trying to go around this fence really, although I will stick it off into the water anyways. But yeah, so I just got to do the fence all the way around the track. Um, do I want to make it so that, I'm trying to think how I want to do this part. Do I want to put the fence all the way around the river too? I guess I'll make it so you can go drive around this way if you want, really want to. There might be like a lap count thing you could do if you could drive on the outside. I don't know. I'm not going to think about that for now. I can fix that later if that's a problem. But So you will be able to drive down the river if you really want to. Uh, not that it will benefit you, I don't think. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, um, there's the foot down there. Like this has gotta be like this. I 
There we go. It's kind of tight there. It's a very tight turn. The only difficult part of this track, maybe. I don't know. There's not a whole lot going on in this track because it's meant to be the easiest one, I guess. Just a massive duck. probably pick a spot to like fill in with trees and stuff that um, you can technically drive into so the, the fence should probably stick out a little bit in some areas so they have some room to work with this can be like one of them you know this is kind of like a stamp so I'm just going along all the edges with the fences <laughs> Fortunately, I have an auto tower, which is going to save me a ton of time here. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done, so. Alright. We just go left, go straight into the uh, water. And then, is it T? Yeah, T to auto tell it. Um, so, thank God it didn't cr crash. All right. Um, now on the outside, we also needed a fence, so we just did the inside. Um, there needs to be a fence on the outside. Um, where do I want to start this one? You know, the fence should really, you know, I'll do it like this. <laughs> this is such a weird way to do a fence, but whatever this is a good section to put some trees in so I'll, I'll leave that grass there for people to go drive around and, and fly off into if they get bumped <laughs> correctly this is technically the inside of the duck so this half is the shorter half as we saw with all the stamping <laughs> all right just follow this down it's a good thing that happened to line up all right I can auto tile that that's o t there we go and then now um I guess we could do this part. The duck foot. My phone just went off, that's fun. Actually, I'm going to do what I did before and leave a little bit of a shortcut for anyone who has the items to take it. I 
is for this spot. Oh, this is where the shortcut is. There's got to be a gap. Uh, I'm trying to think. I feel like, yeah, we should, I should probably cut this off. So it should be that you need to come in through the top if you want to take this section. And then I can like curve this out a little bit just for the sake of making it more visually interesting. Gotta make sure they don't touch or I'm gonna have an auto tiling problem. There it goes, that'll work. And then this part just goes up this way. And then this goes out to the water here. And we auto tile it all, save it. Check the edges. There's going to be some pieces that need to be corrected like that. Um, I guess look through the whole track, make sure that all of it looks good. I think um, there's stuff I have to do still by the feet, if I remember correctly. But other than that, most of the uh, fences should be here. Or did I do the whole foot? I guess I did. Looks like I did. Oh, that needs to be corrected. That. Uh, and then, all right. Now for the decorating part that's not just fences. <sighs> all right. How do I use that map with Pygame? You, you can load it. The one I was drawing, or I don't know if that was from when I was drawing or if it was from the Lava Editor, but the one I was drawing, you just load it in as an image. Uh, this one, this is just saying where the tiles go. It's not that complicated. Uh, do you ever play my subscribers games? Uh, just like, was it last week I was playing the Frago game? Or was that the week before? I don't remember. I think it was last week, yeah. Um, Although it's not necessarily because they're my subscribers, it's because they made something cool with my game that I wanted to play. Um, what's the most impressive, impressive Pride game project I've seen? I mean, there's multiple ways in which a project can be impressive. So, let me think. Um, I guess, well, the, the most successful one is the, was it Rift Wizards or whatever, which is, I guess, a uh, weird um roguelike like an actual roguelike thing maybe it's like an ascii thing um what else is there uh i mean even from before my time there there is switch cars that still holds up i think pretty well as being pretty impressive um and then i mean the one that like i i I feel like, what is it, Hue Flowing is a notch above most of the things I've seen out there. I really want to do more with the idea from Hue Flowing because it's just visually very interesting. I feel like there's a lot I could do with that concept. Um, but yeah, it's like, I feel like the thing right now is that a lot of people that are getting into Pi Game are still learning it. So there's not a whole lot of people that have gone gotten to a point where they've made Steam games. So, I mean, for example, uh, anyone who knows Smelly Frog would know that he's been around for quite a while making games with Pi Game. Uh, so um, there's definitely more people now starting to get into it. So I guess maybe in a couple of years we'll start seeing the fruits of that a bit more. Oh, you know what? A, a game that I saw that's really cool. Um, it's the guy with the Cyrillic name in my Discord server uh, that has the fighting game where it's all um, procedurally animated. That one looks really cool. That's 
possibly one of the best looking things I've seen, I think. Um, I, I need to play more with procedural animation. I did that for Yannock. I did that on the um, the centipedes, but I could do it with more stuff. And I do like the way the procedural animation looks. It just, like, um, what is it? Is it Rain World? What is the game called? Is it, it might be called Rain World. The, the thing with the weird, the slug cat, um, I, I think with pixel art, procedural animation could look really good. Um, and I think the way it's done in, like, uh, is it Rain World? Um, would look pretty good with my art style. So I, I think I might get into that a bit more. Um, I would like to, if I do that, I would probably need to make like a framework for doing that with to make it so that it's not so tedious to work with. Because if you look at the centipede code in Yannock, it's like hundreds of lines of animation code or something. Uh, how did I make my avatar? It's um, Pygame, Modern GL, and Media Pipe, and lots of math. Uh, is there a different... Is there a way to have a different angle to the stack sprites? Are you talking about aside from the just spinning it? Um, if you want to rotate it on a different axis, then that's just full 3D, so no. But I mean, you can. Or are you talking about just the view that I have in my editor here where I can't. where, just, where it's just top down? Um, but it's going to. Yeah, there's no reason to have the different angles. I mean, well, it would be nice if the editor showed everything, but um, uh, it would be too much work, so you can only see it in the game. And for the most things, I think the top-down perspective for the editor is nice, but, um, yeah, it'll look interesting in a bit. Uh, no pie charm? No. Are viewing it at 45 or 60 degree? Well, it can be at any angle in game on that one axis. Anyways, let's start pla placing some trees. Um, so this one, I want it to be a bit more sparse. I don't want it to be super dense like um, it is in Moo Moo. Should I put some palm trees? I'm tempted to put some, just a couple palm trees. Just like right here or something. Just lining the water in a couple spots. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so I'm just gonna, since you shouldn't be leaving the fenced area, I only have to do the trees near the fenced area. It's great. But yeah, Moo Moo's got the dense forest type thing going on, so I'm not gonna do that on this one. This is going to be a lot more sparse. And I feel like a lot of the places where you have races are more sparsely wooded to begin with. It would be funny if I made a Daytona 500 reference. You know, it took me a shockingly long time to figure out where Daytona was. I didn't know until I was like, what, 15? <laughs> This is more of the stamping like stuff, but you know, all of this goes into making the game have trees and nice looking floors and all sorts of other stuff that's important. So, Worried some of these trees might be spilling onto the road a little bit. I think the top left corner is actually kind of the center of the tree or something like that. The way it works is a little bit funny. 
So what you see here is not necessarily the accurate placement. So take it all with a grain of salt. Just line the road with a couple of trees where I can. And we'll go down this way. There's the palm trees again. And what can I do here? Actually, that, there should not be a tree right there. Here we go. Put some trees right here. Um, and then this section needs some trees too. Just gonna save it. I'm getting a little bit paranoid that the thing is not saving, so I'm just going to double check and make sure that it's being outputted. It should be, but just in case. So we go to Sunny Circuit and we look at new, and it's 85 kilobytes, which means it's got all our data in there, so we're good. Um, anyways, more trees. That is my job, placing trees. What else is there to do? Then I gotta do the grass and the stumps. There, don't, there won't be too many stumps, but there might be a lot of rocks, so. Um, we can have some, ooh, well, there's gonna be people coming from here. Just gotta be careful about that part. But um, people are gonna be driving through there. Let's see, is that everything? Unfortunately, there's no way to zoom out and just look at everything but I think I got most of it. Oh, there's a section. Um, that's a shortcut. And these can go here. I'm put some trees right here, make this one kind of dense. Uh, there we go. Why does my phone keep going off? All right, we've got the trees. Um, I guess there could be a couple more right here. Put a palm tree over here. Put some around here. All right, 90 kilobytes. All right. What else? I feel like I got most of the track. So let's go ahead and do the rocks and grass, and then maybe some mountains, and uh, we'll put some barrels too. So it never hurts to drop down some barrels somewhere. So like near the finish line, just throw them in there, because why not? Throw some in here too. Uh, There's things to look at, I guess. What is this? That's a cone. What is this one? Wait, I can try and mark what this is. What is that? The horse thing is right here. What is this? What could that be? Does it say? Data, images, blocks, what do we have? Brick, cactus, cannonball, chicken, cone, crab. Go oh, it's a ghost, right? That's what it was. I do not need ghosts on this map. I could put a grave on, that'll be funny. Um, ooh, what if, what if instead of the fences right here, I had this? Oh, you know what I just, I just remember? You can't jump over the fences. There has to be a gap here. So what I'll do instead is, well, delete the fences, I guess. I'll, I'll cut off the fences with these. Um, and then I will have this running through. So 
So we can delete these fences. And that will be a little bit of a gap for people to jump through there. Um, that'll look interesting. What else do we have to work with? Put some random penguins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do grass. That's the next big one. And then rocks and stumps. Actually, no, stumps should go first because they're bigger. Um, I have to be more picky about where I place them. Don't need a ton of them, just enough to make it look interesting. All right, I think I, I'm gonna leave the bottom section more free of stumps as if it wasn't chop down as much down there. Um, so next we can do the grass. Actually, no, let's do rocks first because they're bigger than grass and then we'll do grass last. Um, so the rocks, similar situation to the, the stumps. I'm just gonna place them wherever, not too many. Um, and I think I'll put more of them up on this side as well. Not really put too many on the bottom side. Just because I, I want it to be like, there's not, I don't know, I want the bottom side to feel more lush, which means I'll probably put less um, grass up on the top side and more grass on the bottom side. So that'll add some variance. You know what, I would also like to have some someday maybe add um, some brown trees, not not just trees without leaves, but trees that are like fall type trees. That would be cool. Make some maple tree way or something like that. I don't know. Um, let's see. But yeah, once you get over the river, actually, no, we are over the river. All right. So, all right. Last thing, is this last thing? Is grass. Yeah, that's the last thing, okay. So grass, just a little bit here and there for this section of the map. Don't need a ton of it. Just put it wherever. And then, I don't want that. Just put it between all the trees. Don't need a ton of it. We're actually getting close to the part where I will want more. Um, all right, so I'm gonna keep the normal rates here. And then once I cross the river here, that's where it's gonna be more, much more grass. So it's like lots of it everywhere. Winding the road. Ooh, that's bad. I don't want that. There's only one layer of tiles, unlike most of my games where I do actually have layers. This game does not actually have layers, so um, <laughs> be careful about that. All right, but yeah, this is the section that's gonna have all the grass. Put that there. I think you can drive the grass if I remember correctly. I think that's how I set it up. All right. So lots of grass around here. Can do a little patches along here.
needs it in here. Yeah, save it. What are we up to? Oh, I can't see. Wait, maps. Sunny circuit. We're up to 114 kilobytes of map data now, which is a fairly respectable amount. It's like this area is not chopped down too much. It's going to have lots of grass. I really want to animate the trees and stuff before, but doing that with sprite stacks is not really reasonable because then you'd have to like cache every frame of the animation and it would be an absurd amount of RAM. Uh, there's other ways to do it, but it's more uh, intense on your processor. I almost implemented my like platformer type of grass and the stuff you see in my other games for the grass on this. That was actually my original plan, but then I didn't want to deal with the rotations, <laughs> the matrix rotations and stuff, because I would have to recode a lot of it, because it's only meant to, to render on a like uh, cardinal grid. Uh, and I didn't want the weird side effects of um, just rotating it as opposed to mathematically placing it in the right spot and not needing rotations. All right, we're getting up to where the grass should be sparse again. I'm just adding some more along here because that probably needs it. Um, Can you drive over that so that's not a huge deal? Just add grass randomly around here. Boop. So like this area should also be kind of lush on the left side, but not too lush on the right side. Just a little bit on the right. I'm wondering if this oldest grass is gonna lag me out. Cause I think this is probably more grass than Moomoo. Moomoo's also not that big of a map. This one's pretty big. So this one might actually have more tiles than any other map or something like that. Um, we'll see. I think we're getting close to having grasped everything. <laughs> There we go. Save, just put the grass around here randomly. And we're getting quotes. Almost there, almost got a map, a new map. I'm doing like one a month right now or something. <laughs> it's not a bad rate. You give me 12 months, 12 maps. On top of the seven I've got, that's a pretty good number. That's like uh, almost 20. Gonna mix these in with the palm trees here. All right, I don't think I did the top side at all. So I'm having to grass that. Here's where it connects with the other stuff. So just throw down a couple things of grass down there. This section needs some grass, very obviously. Um, and then obviously right here. Put some right here too. And this area doesn't have any grass. I just keep finding more areas that I didn't grass yet. Um, <laughs> but I'm getting very close. I can feel it. All right, so this also needs some grass. Man. It's 
stamping all over again. All right. Is that it? Let's see. We go around, look for places that are missing grass. If there are none, we're done. And we've got a track that I can race around in, finally. This is one of the bigger tracks, I think. I can add a little bit more there. Maybe one right here and there, and a couple over here. Just align the road with it. Didn't mean to do that. Um, all right. That looks good. Just gonna keep following the track and make sure it's all grassed up. Oh, this section needs some. And but that should cover that. And we go around this way and we see in grass everywhere, so we are good. So I have this stuff, delete blocks.json, rename this to blocks.json, and we should have ourselves a track. So let's see if this works. Uh, CMD, CD desktop, CD stuff, CD pix carts, pi server, make another window, desktop, CD stuff, CD pix carts, pi game.py, and you're gonna hear the music here. And we'll mute that one. We'll pull this off to the sign because I need that one just in the lobby. Um, and then we need this one over here. Yo, we're gonna play this on the fish. Let's see if it works. It might just immediately crash, who knows? <laughs> There's always a decent chance that happens. Oh, nope, we're on the track. 160 FPS, that's pretty decent. Yo. Nice, it's got the um, nice bright blue water. Moo Moo doesn't have any water, that, that's something worth noting. I am liking the way this is looking. Far enough? Yes. Oh yeah, I did test it last stream. I missed it. <laughs> so this is like a really wide turn. This track is overall very wide. This is circuit. And then it gets a little bit thinner back here. Line. Let's try and get some of those shortcuts and test those out. So there's this one right here. Just hop across the grass like it's Mario Kart. Whoa, 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 whoa. This one's missing an outline. That's got to be fixed. So that is missing an outline. Or the shadow. That's an easy fix, but... There's that little shortcut right there. Then I gotta go right up here. Let's try out this thing. So you could actually hit this one and go. Okay, hang on. If you like hit it at this angle, and get through this a little bit. But you need the purple boost with one of those, the star to get through here properly, and then you can just go over that way. Uh, there's no way for me to pull it with two players, so. Demonstrate that, but it would work. Yeah, you can look at the bottom right and the mini map is just the duck. Anyways, so let's go ahead and fix that shadow though. Um, so I just need a sprite for that. We just go up to this, um, and you can probably immediately see where it went wrong. I did 150, didn't I, for the shadow? I think I did. So 
yet. So these whole areas don't have, um, can I like do that and then do that? Oh yes, I can, that works. Um, Cause I don't want, there's only certain, some places that I want this to be done in. There we go. So those need shadows and I think that's it. So all I have to do here is do this 150, shift O, shift O, shift O. And, oh, nope. Gotta be careful with that. Um, where's the, the lasso? This is not how you're supposed to do this, but actually wait. You know, what, I'm gonna just select the floor. So you just go down to layer two, turn that off. Oop. Why is it doing that? Oh, it should be down here. What? No way. Layer two, W, and we just do that. Should go through and grab these, and then we can turn our layers back on. And then now on four, we can do our shift O, shift O, shift O. And that will give us the shadows in the right spot. Yep. Ta-da. Um, and then now we just export this. File export as, this should be the correct one, yep. Export, yep, yep. And the server's still running, so I can just boot back up in here. And it'll just throw me into the lobby with the, my updated artwork, though. So now if I go over here, there, we've got the shadows here, which is what we were missing. Yay! Alright. Would it be possible for me to build an auto decorator? Yes, technically. Um, the question is how long would it take me to do that? And it's probably more than it would take me to decorate. Because I'm not, uh, this is probably one of the more intense tracks in terms of decorating that in Moo Moo. Um, like the Sandy Oasis is pretty sparse. Um, Frosty Iceberg is pretty sparse. A lot of them are pretty sparse. Uh, so um, not really worth doing, I don't think. Uh, how long do I think it would take to learn Pi Game? It's, you can learn it in like a day if you're experienced with programming. Um, and the and the way rendering works makes sense to you because uh, it's not that complicated. It's pretty much just put an image on the screen, handle input, stuff like that. Uh, it's not that complicated. The the hard part is building stuff up with those basic tools. Uh, I've talked about why I don't use engines multiple times. I have a whole video about it. Um, but I mean, right now for me specifically, it's just that I can get I do stuff way faster without an engine, or a lot of stuff, the things that matter. Uh, there's a reason why I beat a bunch of people all the time in game jams who are trying to use engines when I'm not using one. But uh, also nowadays I have my own framework and stuff, so uh, which makes things faster than even if I were using an engine. Uh, did I code the drag in Function, wait, what? Did you code the dragon function yourself because you heard tool pig pen in one of my videos? Pig pen is my own thing. I made pig pen. But um, everything, like, I don't use anything on top of Pygame other than modern GL that isn't mine. So I just use Pygame modern GL. Modern GL is just so I can use OpenGL and do shaders for things like the water you can see on the left. So um, for the most part, it's just me building on top of my own frameworks. What I think about Vim, um, I don't tend to care that much about what my IDE is. Um, I use Vim for work and it's especially useful for, over SSH when you're SSHing into a server and you need to edit something. Um, but for game development, I don't 
use it. I mean, like, I'm on Windows anyways. You can, I mean, I guess you can get it set up with, like, WSL or something, but I haven't bothered. Um, I don't have any reason to use it. Um... And I don't really have much use for WSL. I had on my other computer, I, um, I had it set up for dual booting Linux, and I'll probably set it up on this one at some point. I'll probably just get another drive and plug it in. Because I want to leave my full two terabytes to Windows. Um, will I put the game on Steam? This one, I'm not sure how I'm going to do the release yet. Uh, I think I'm going to have to feel it out with the playtests and stuff like that. Because I don't want to overload the servers. Because um, I'm gonna put it on servers that I already have that I'm using for other stuff so <laughs> I won't have very much room I can handle maybe a um, 100 or 200 players before I have to um, get more so if I just throw it on Steam for free immediately then we're gonna have a problem probably um, I, would, uh, I think I'll do a smooth release where I do like itch.io or something first and people can just play and own and then we'll uh, I guess sort out bugs from there, and then when it's kind of like bug free and stable, and then I'll, I might scale up and put it on Steam, but we'll see. Uh... Is the mini map purposely made to look like a duck? Yes, it is. I'm sitting on the eye right now. Um, let's go check out the other pot, uh, spot, not pot, spot I added shadows. And then I think we'll be good. I wanna drive into the grass just to double check. Yeah, you can drive through the grass. There's the shadows here, that's correct. If you have the blue bug, you might be able to just drive through this. Which would be funny. Oh, you can't go over the rock. You have to go around the rock. <laughs> Everything that has like a physical collider in it has infinite height, because I didn't want to deal with um, the physics of you landing on top of something. Uh, I thought about doing like a lot more three-dimensional stuff, before and I could have where like um, there could be like raised parts of the road and stuff like that um, but uh, I I decided to keep it simple because maybe if Pixcarts does really well I might do like some updates where you can drive like on different elevations which would be cool um, and like you could have like a bridge that goes over one part because right now the only way I can loop over the track is if I create a jump that goes over and then I have to use the water to separate the parts because um, otherwise it, if it's a fence it blocks everything above it um, and then if it uh, so you can't jump over a fence with this boost um, there can't be a higher road because that's not how the game is set up right now so you just have to hit the ramp and go way over it's like a huge jump and then there has to be like water in between because that's the only way I can make a thing that you can go over but also acts as a barrier for people like in, in the middle part um, and it always has to be that the the second part of this is the part that you um, uh, like with the part of this intersection that you reach second has to be the part that goes over or else you can just lap skip and stuff um, or not lap skip you just skip part of the track um, I actually had to change, I think I had to change while I was making this one because I accidentally did it the other way around. I think it was this one, go this going uh, horizontal that I did as lower and then you jump over from the, the neck, a duck's neck going up. Um, but then I was like, wait, hold on, the track's going that way and I have to flip it around. But if I could actually do elevation stuff and like create blocks you could ride on top of, I can create a bridge up here and then you can drive on the bridge um, and go over to the, uh, um, other side. 
uh, without having to do this weird water stuff. Which, I mean, it, I feel like in a day I could add that as a feature, but then that adds potential other issues that I just kind of don't want to deal with. So I'll probably, uh, maybe I'll do it before release, but I probably won't. And I'll probably just see if you like the game and then maybe add it and then, and then it starts becomes 3D, so we'll see. Yeah, and like I said, probably itch first, then Steam for the release. Um, probably doing a playtest after the next map, because we've got seven maps now. Here, I'll just finish this track so that we can go back to the map select. And take a look at that. So you want to be on the left side for that speed boost. That turns so wide at the duck's tail. Save that boost for the shortcut up here. Saving boost for a shortcut is a very important part of, part of this game. Because there's shortcuts everywhere that you need the boost for. Whereas in Mario Kart, that's not as common. And then some of the shortcuts are pretty serious. So, yeah. Okay, right, we're on the last lap. Someone's beeping their car horn outside my window. Alright, we're on the final stretch here. Boom. Alright, you can see the, um, the list. But yeah, one more track and I'll do a play test. Oh, that tree's kind of inside the wall, but I don't really care. <laughs> All right. Here's the track list. How much space do I even have? So we've got seven in here. I can fit one, two, I think two more before we run out of space. So I have to make it scroll. But for the next playtest, since I'm only gonna have eight, we'll be fine. The new ones for the next playtest so far are Frosty Iceberg, Sunny Circuit. Sandy Oasis was there. Um, so the third map will also be a new map. Um, so we'll have quite the variety in here. But after I do the third one, there's a lot of coding left to do. And th those streams will probably be more interesting because I'll be actually writing code. Um, so I gotta fix the website, got some bugs to fix, gotta, um, what else is there? Uh, there's some general improvements. Like I wanna do the um, country detection stuff a bit better. Like for example, people with pie holes <laughs> blocked the website that I, I the way that it figures out your country is it sends a request to some other like service that tells me what the IP address you sent it from is um, what, where, what country it's located in. Uh, and then your client tells the server what your client figured out. So uh, my server is not even the one passing around the IP address because um, my server is sitting behind Nginx. So I don't even see the IP address that gets filtered out beforehand. Um, so it all looks like it's coming from localhost from my server's perspective. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, so next playtest, hoping within two months. I'll probably look at scheduling it soon. Uh, once I figure out what the last new track's gonna be for the next playtest, I'll probably uh, pencil in a date. Uh, will I ever make a track that is really long but has lap checkpoints throughout similar to Mario Kart. Is that a thing? I thought those ones were just like listed as one lap. That's weird. Um, I could do, like it's not very hard for me to do one that's not three laps. 
I don't really want to make like a super long one that's just all one lap because that, that's like three times as much work to make something that you drive through for like 30 minutes and <laughs> uh, yeah it's just too much work to do something like that. Now what I might do is one that has more like a smaller one that has a ton of laps like Baby Circuit. Is it Baby Circuit? This is called. Well, it's just a loop and you have like seven laps or something. Or the five, I don't know. Um, I could do something like that. But yeah, I'm not gonna go through all the effort to make like a, a single lap track. Uh, did I try adding any advanced movement to the game or is it all just about getting clean slides? Advanced like turning more while jumping or something to always have something to improve on. Not talk, uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about with the jumping thing. I implemented, I, I did it the way that it works in Mario Kart Wii, where um, later on a lot of the mechanics go into making sure that you get, um, in Mario Kart Wii, it's the wheelies. You gotta get them lined up because um, the wheelies are where you get a, a fair bit of your extra speed from and you have to be going straight to use them. If you try it, you can turn a little bit while you're using them, and um, but it'll slow you down if you do that. Uh, so ideally, the way the skill ceiling in Mario Kart Wii works is that, well, normally you gotta handle your drift right, but then after that, um, one of the big movement things is getting your, like, immediately coming out of that mini turbo from your turns you have to get your angle right so that you can just do a wheelie all the way to the next turn. Um, so that since you're going straight the whole time, you can keep the max speed. Uh, I put that whole whole thing into this game. So this game's meant to play like Mario Kart Wii. I don't really like the new Mario Karts. Um, so I have the focus mode since I don't have carts that can do wheelies. So, so if you notice, there are some moments where I was pressing V. Well, you, you can see the V part, but I, I was pressing V and there was um, like a like gray effects coming off of my car and I was going faster. Um, that That's the equivalent of a wheelie. So it makes you go faster when you're going straight. If you bump someone, you spin out and I actually did spin out at the end of the last race. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how that works. Um, so there, there's some depth there. Uh, a lot of it's gonna be similar to Mario Kart Wii. Um, there's, there's actually not very many different ways that this game is different from Mario Kart Wii, except that it's the fact that it's like top-down sprite stacking. Um, but Mario Kart Wii is just the Mario Kart I like, and I still like it. I don't have a Wii with me right now because um, it's with my the rest of my family. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I have a lot of hours for Mario Kart Wii. I got up to what is it? Did I get? I think I got 8,600 VR was my rating. And that's on. And that's not like the normal multiplayer Mario Kart Wii. That's modded where everyone who's playing already has a lot of experience. So it's much harder to get into the 9,000s on that than it was um, back when they actually had the servers online. Because um, I also think I got into the 8,000s back when they had the, the servers online as well. But I mostly, uh, most of my time, I think, went into playing it and modded with the hundreds of tracks. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I can't even do the amount that normal Mario Kart has. Because Mario Kart has, what is it? Is it six or eight cups in each row? I can't remember. I feel like it's six. And six by two is 12 cups. Does that sound right? And, or is it there's four cups in a row? I can't remember. That'd be four. But then it's times four. So, so if it's four in a row and there's two rows, there's eight cups. And it's eight times uh, four is um, 32 tracks. If it's six, it's gonna be 48 tracks. Whereas I'm probably gonna have between 10 and 20. So. <laughs> I'm uh, not going to have as many as a normal Mario Kart game, because that's a lot of work. Uh, I have to be... Well, right now I'm doing one a month. Uh, how many years is that? It's going to be like a couple years of doing these streams on Saturdays, working on tracks to get that many tracks. But then also it's, it would be kind of repetitive, because I don't have that third dimension right now. I might add it later, but for now I don't. So uh, the maps are not going to feel as different. 
Anyways, uh, I think that's going to be it for this week. Next week, I might do some stuff with Shobnet um, live, uh, but I might also do more um, stuff with PixCards. We'll see. Um, but 